Someone once told me the grass is much greener. A lot of people are watching along with us. Things are going to be taken a lot further. It does keep the flow really, really nicely, which makes it a show that was really ahead of its time. Where's that petrified eyeball at now? Who's had it last? Macy is amazing, and she doesn't care about what other people think about her. Don't you feel like maybe Dodie represents the instinctive animal ugly part of us? I might have just been having a bad day when I gave it the math. I can't go priest, priest, priest. We don't say Moses, we say me. Someone once told me the grass is much greener on the other side. Hello everyone, welcome to a brand new episode of We're In Between, the podcast that discusses about every single episode of As Told by Ginger once a week. I am Patricia. I'm Casey. And uh, we have ourselves a very special guest. He was a producer and a director of various Klasky Chupo Nicktoons, including As Told by Ginger. He was the director of pretty much half of the entire series, 30 episodes in total. We have Mr. Mark Grizzly. Mark, welcome to We're In Between. Thank you for having me, I appreciate it. Absolutely. So, um, Casey, why don't you start off with the question this time? Okay. Um, so what is it like only directing certain episodes? I come from a theater background, and so the sort of serial nature of this show, mm-hmm. I wonder how you approach that. Like, what's it like coming in and directing an episode when maybe someone else directed the episode before it? Yeah, so what you'll see in the credits is that I'm credited as either um, the... In the main credits, I'm credited as either the creative producer or the supervising director, and that means that I was overseeing a crew of, of five directors, five very talented directors. Oh. You know, Michael Kennedy and Ron Noble and uh, Dean Criswell, and you'll see you know all of them in there. Um, and so I oversaw them, and I overlooked, I approved their work as they went through the process, and it was up to me to keep the continuity straight. I mean, of course, the showrunner, Emily, in this case, you know, she was keeping continuity straight from a writing perspective, but from a visualization perspective, I was keeping <clears throat> keeping the show, you know, going along a certain route, you know, that we have predetermined route. Um, but yeah, it's, it, you know, it's even even so, even with having five directors, it's a handful. Oh, I can imagine. And yeah, there are You probably have seen some of them. <laughs> yeah. So I, I want to know, how did you get into Klasky Chupo? You know, I was working. Uh, I was working with a guy named Sean Laurie at a studio uh, in San Diego, and he was they, the Classic Chupo grabbed him to produce the Rugrats movie, and we had worked together. I was working for him as an artist. I was a storyboard artist way back when, and uh, and an animator. And um, when uh, they started producing the Rugrats movie, he asked me to come up, and I became part of the storyboard crew on the Rugrats movie. And then I moved into storyboarding on the on the Wild Thornberries the first season, and then I started directing. I directed on Rugrats and uh, and then of course Wild Thornberries and Ginger, and um, I was a supervising director on on Rocket Power as well. Mm. I, I even asked this to Eric uh, Eric um, Casimiro this very same question, and I know you know you being a part of a lot of Klasky Chupo shows, and I'm sure that every single one of them is like a different child. But out of all the shows that you worked on, which is your favorite? Well, <laughs> I'm not just saying this because I'm on the Ginger podcast, by the way. But as told by Ginger is my favorite show that I worked on, Klasky <laughs> Chupo, and it's right there, if not number one all time. Wow. Well, Farmberry is very close too. I mean, I, you know, it's 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 up there. I had a really great time at Classic Chupo. We put out a lot of high quality content. Awesome, uh, Casey. You're next with a question. Oh, there was something we wanted to get back to in the and she was gone discussion. What was that? Oh, yeah. Was that the chicken? Yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. Like all the. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> so yeah. The, I so Derek. So, so it was me. You know what? It was one of the questions. It was one of the listener. Uh, the listener questions. Yeah. So and, well, actually, um, it wasn't one of the listener questions. So basically, we we mentioned this in Miss Foutley's boys that Darren McGowan was doing like this chicken cartoon, and Mark was the voice of the farmer who went like. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like me. <laughs> I step in occasionally, and I'm a terrible. I mean, I'm, I'm a voice director, but the irony of it is, is that I'm a terrible actor. I'm horrible. 
<laughs> it's so bad sometimes it works you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> so you know speaking of which i mean we always um we always love to ask you know these questions and uh, you know casey we always have fun listening to the everybody's responses but what are your favorite behind the scenes stories well behind the scenes stories in Klasky chupo well yeah Klasky chupo or with um ginger whatever oh my god i could go on and on i mean listen at that time at Klasky chupo Klasky Chupo was succeeding wildly, and we were moving from small building into enormous building. I mean, and there was you know resources everywhere, gigantic offices, people everywhere, hundreds of people working at Klasky Chupo right there on Sunset Boulevard across from the Cinerama Dome. And with that, more drama in one day at Klasky Chupo than in an entire season of *Best Sold by Ginger*. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. Or all of which I cannot discuss here. <laughs> sure, that's it's it's not a problem. But yeah, I mean, a lot of the people they talk about like, um, you know, funny behind the scenes stories with like the voice actors and about how everybody cracked up when Macy would do her snorting or her, ch you know, that kind of stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, if it weren't fifteen years ago, I'd have some great stories about that stuff. <laughs> but yeah, we did. I mean. Jackie's fantastic, and she was a voice on, you know, another show that I did. I had Paul and Jackie, they're married, right? Yes, Paul they are. Yeah. yeah. And, and uh, I had them come and audition for a show of mine. They were nice enough to audition for me. And I swear I had a pounding headache afterwards, not because they're difficult, but because they're so goddamn funny that I was <laughs> laughing through the whole session, you know? <laughs> Yeah, I, I can imagine because you know they're they when they interact with one another, they're always interrupting each other's sentences. They're always coming up with funny um, lines or whatever. I can imagine them being a riot in the recording booth. They're hilarious. Really. Anyway, uh, I'm sorry, Casey. I interrupted your question. Go ahead. Oh no, I, I hadn't started anything. I was just commenting. I think I suppose it is my turn again. Um, was there a character in As Told by Ginger that you would have liked to flesh out more beyond the three seasons that we saw them? Gosh, that's a good question. I mean, I don't know if Darren ever got his due. I mean, he was such a great mm. character. Such a great well, I mean, actor. we do have a big development with Darren in season three, but we cannot say it because Casey hasn't seen the show yet in its yeah, entirety. I'm in order. <laughs> I'm going in order. <laughs> yeah, so we won't talk about that, but I think that we're headed for giving him a bigger role, you know? Sure. There was, you know, Ken's voice, there's something that he can command a scene, but he's so gentle sounding there's something you know there's he's got that it's um it's a very special voice you know you don't hear that very often when you do both absolutely yeah, I do agree. Absolutely. For me, um, I guess I, I, for a question that I want to ask is, um, were there any moments, like any particular scenes or even episodes of As Told by Ginger that um, would uh, that couldn't get off the ground for whatever reason? <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, you know what? I think that Emily was constantly pushing the boundaries with Nickelodeon. I know she was. I know that there was a lot of conflict at Nickelodeon. Um, and she wanted to do real stuff. I can't think of anything specific, but I know that it was a battle for every script that went through because, you know, this is the kind of content, even as great as the Wild Thornberries was, this isn't the kind of content that would be in the Wild Thornberries. This isn't the, in, the kind right. of content that would be in any other next show, or, you know, because it felt like it was live action. Right. For sure. And it seems like Nick has a, a history of taking on more risky shows and then sort of having to walk that line. You know, I'm thinking specifically of like the legend of Korra and that whole saga of going to online only. And uh, it's, it's, it must have been an interesting trade off. And to have an episode that's essentially about like periods, right? You know, like, uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly that type of stuff. <laughs> right. And, and I, that was great. And I'm sure there were tons of people whose childhoods were enhanced by getting some of that information that they might not have otherwise. But I imagine it was a fine line to walk. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, especially with, of course, I'm not going to get into it, Casey. But so yeah, the, the second half of season three never aired on Nickelodeon, but on the Nicktoons network. But even on the Nicktoons Network, it only aired two, 
and then the rest of it were aired in other countries or were aired much later and even still to this day fans have no idea what happened and why those episodes never aired i mean four out of the eight as told by gingers that were never aired on tv were aired just two years ago on nick splat Oh my God! Does that include a lesson in tight ropes? That one, yes. That one ever? Yes. The the a lesson in tight ropes, and um, let's see. Um, uh, let's. Stuff will kill you. Yeah, you know? yeah. Well, stuff will kill you has still not aired on um on any Nickelodeon channel, but you know, <laughs> it's still. I wonder why. You know, yeah, I wonder that. why. <laughs> well, well, yeah. There's. Well, we'll definitely get into that later. But yeah, you know, it, it, here's a sad <laughs> thing, Mark, about you know the the episode a lesson in tight ropes and then later on it would follow up into the episode uh Dodie's big break so they aired it out of order they aired Dodie's big break oh, first and God. then they aired a lesson in tight ropes it's like that made me so no. angry i didn't know that i had no idea i'll tell you what about so at, at this time whatever it was 2003 uh, things started going a little bit south at Klasky Chupo, and one of the reasons why was because um, Klasky Chupo used to be the house that, well, Nickelodeon was the house that Klasky Chupo built, and then right. along, and they didn't like that. Right. This is from my perspective, by the way. I'm not spouting facts, but this is my perspective. They didn't like it, and when SpongeBob came around and the power shifted the way that it did, you know, they couldn't care less about maybe anything but Rugrats at that time. Right. You know? Yeah. Right. I mean, nothing to say bad about Klasky Chupo. I mean, this is my personal opinion. But I felt like their later programs, and even like after their shows pretty much were over, I felt like Klasky Chupo didn't have a leg to stand on. Like, as soon as, um, like, for example, Rugrats and the Wild Thornberries and Rocket Power all ended in the same year. They ended in two thousand. Really? Yeah, they ended in two- oh, I never, re- I never realized that. Yeah, they end, I yeah, think- Yeah, Nick pulled the plug on those shows. I mean, if I remember correctly, Nick pulled the plug on all those shows. Right. Well, I'm, I'm looking at the history right now, because I'll be honest, I, beyond the shows, I don't know a ton about the production history of a lot of these shows. So I'm seeing, you know, around, especially by 2006 was the time that Nickelodeon decided they wanted to go in a different animation style, uh, which surprises me, you know, with the legacy of Rugrats being, you know, the only Nicktoon with a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame and how Rugrats, like... In a way, I don't think there'd be a nickel, a modern Nickelodeon without Rugrats or without uh, the studio in general. So there wouldn't, there wouldn't be. And I'll tell you, you know, in the business, we know that um, an acquisition doesn't have the kind of power that it, that a show made in house has. Okay. And so. Um, yeah, I just looked it up. Um, I just looked it up. I was wrong. It was 2004 that they all ended. They all ended in the same year. Rugrats yeah. ended in August. Um, Rocket Power ended in July. While Thornberries ended in um, June, they all ended in 2004. Yeah, that wasn't a coincidence. <laughs> right, right. And at that time, I left. I left. I even left Ginger. I left post production in the hands of Michael Kenny, very capable hands of Michael Davis Kenny. But I left uh, to go and do a, sh- uh, a show called Father of the Pride and Dreamers, which also failed. But. <laughs> But uh, so it goes. So I, I directed a lesson in tight ropes, which I really have strong feelings about as well. I love that script and the episode it means a lot to me. Uh, and um, I directed the first. You know, I was the supervising director of all of them, and then I directed the first of the wedding frame. Is that what it's called? Yes. Was it called really, the wedding frame? Yes. <clears throat> I directed the first episode of the wedding frame, and then I left and went to DreamWorks. Right. Well, not because I left, but because. The whole thing was coming down because Nickelodeon wasn't picking up any more of our shows. Yeah, right. and I think my, I mean, yeah, I mean, Rugrats Go Wild, I wasn't really too crazy about, but I think in my opinion, the nail in the coffin was Rugrats Preschool Days. <laughs> we, love, we love to talk about Rugrats Preschool Days on my other podcast. Wow, is that something? Yeah, and uh, yeah. And, uh, and who would have thought that <laughs> Eric Eric Casimiro was the one who created the idea? They scrapped it, and then when he left, like years later, they picked it up and they're like, "Let's do that idea and let's make it suck." 
Yeah. And the hilarious thing right. about it is that we told him. Eric had no idea it ever even saw, ah. like, that people saw it. He never knew. I think he and I left around the same time. And, and was that the one that was in a drastically different style? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Four episodes. It started in the UK and didn't come to America until a few years ago. Yeah. Four episodes yeah. total. I remember it sat on the shelf here, and they went to the the all grown up. They said no. Nickelodeon said no way. <laughs> and, and that's when we started production on all grown up. If I'm, if I'm getting the chronology correct. Yeah. You know what? I, we're going off topic. I think we can start with our listeners, right, Ka- Casey? <laughs> yeah. I think so. Totally. Yeah, totally. totally. <laughs> All right. Uh, that, don't um, worry about I it. We, like, well, we love we love hearing stories like this. Yeah, that was great, um, Patricia. I think since I do have to go, it might make more sense for me to go now instead of in the middle of the listener questions. Sure, that's perfectly fine. Gotcha. Well, thank you so much. This was great, and I look forward to hearing the uh, the listener question segment. Okay. Yeah. Nice to meet you. So, you too. Thank you. Sure. sure. Take care. All right. See you later, Casey. All right. So, uh, yeah, we have a we have a couple of questions from our listeners. Uh, we can start things off in the we're in between forums. Uh, yeah, we have one from DJ, and he asks, "Oh my gosh, Mr. Risley, you don't know how I appreciate your work on As Told by Ginger, particularly the episode Hello Stranger, which is my most respected out of the entire series. Great humor mixed in with a relatable and touching storyline. You are brilliant, sir. My question is." Just how much of your own personal experience with each As Told by Ginger episode's topics did you put in whenever you're directing them? Well, thank you, DJ. I appreciate the question and the compliments. Um, you know, uh, earlier in the, in the podcast, in the main main version of the podcast, we I discussed uh, about the difference between TV directors and feature directors and that um, TV directors are working from an existing script um, that that is handed to them by the showrunner. I mean, they collaborate, but it's essentially, uh, you know, good or bad, you're working with that script. Whereas a feature director bringing the script himself, he's written it himself, you know, he's uh, developed it himself. So it's there's drastic differences in it. And so in the case of a show, a television show, uh, that I'm directing, if the, if the script is a disaster, we'll go back to the, to the drawing board. But on a show like I was told by Ginger, where these gems are dropped in front of you, there's nothing, there's virtually nothing to be done but add uh, little asides or little visual cues here and there. Um, in this case, in, uh, in anything personal that I might have put in a show, things that I'm, I'm remembering, again, this has been years and years ago, but uh, my mom's name is in, uh, is in And She Was Gone. Which, when it says Max Montgomery, my mother's name is Maxine Montgomery. <laughs> um, my uh, there's a picture of my dad in a wedding frame, um, in a frame in a somewhere in someone's house, and there's also a picture of my dog Waski <laughs> in that show. So there's little things like that. Yeah, I, I mean, even Darren was even mentioning that in the episode "Never Can Say Goodbye" when they're entering Brandon's house. Somebody took a picture of Darren when he wasn't looking, and they just decided to put that onto the scene. Yeah, that's right. Gosh, I forgot all about that episode. Never can say goodbye. Wow. Yeah, that's the that's yeah. the episode in which uh, Darren gets his braces removed. I mean, his headgear that's removed. Right. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much for the question, DJ. Uh, we have another question from Cell Rock. And she says, Hi, Mark. Did you have a least favorite episode of As Told by Ginger that you worked on that you couldn't absolutely stand or wished it, it didn't exist? <laughs> no, no. There isn't one of As Told by Ginger, but there are a lot of episodes <laughs> over my career that I wish I hadn't directed. <laughs> Fair enough. All right, uh, we have a question from Norbert, and he says, Hi, Mark. Glad you can work on the underrated gem that is as told by Ginger. A lot of the episodes of the show are very personal and hits home with a lot of people. In particular, episodes like Hello, Stranger, Gym Class Confidential, Losing Anna Bishop, and Butterflies Are Free all had stories and messages that resonated with lots of people. What episode or story from the show hits you home the most? And if your answer is, and she was gone, since that's your favorite, what hits you the second most? Uh, actually, the one that hit me the most is not, and she was gone, although I, you know, that one does hit me very strongly. But the one that hit me the strongest is Hello Stranger, and I think that that's, most fans would agree with that. I mean, it was already touching. We know about how touching the episode is. But after the show aired, my dad got really sick, and he was in the hospital. And I was waiting, and I knew that he was gravely ill. And I was sitting in the, in the corridor at the hospital, 
And his nurse came up to me, and she saw me there with my head, head in my hands, and she said, and she came up and I'll do an impression of them, my, my crying nurse impression, and she said, oh, Mr. Rosen, I just wanted to come by and tell you that my episode of S told my children. <laughs> Stranger means so much to me than my daughter. Oh. <laughs> my dad's dying. <laughs> you know? <laughs> That's amazing. That's an awesome story. <laughs> you know, my mother sat there and talked about the episode. She knew. I mean, I don't even know how she knew. You know, but she sat there and talked about the episode. She was a single mother and how much the the series and that episode specifically meant to her. Oh my God, that's a great story. That's definitely up there with Eric Casimir's story about how they were at a birthday party and some guy came and still singing the little Seal Girl song. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much for your question, Norbert. Uh, we have three questions from Plinkomatic. And he says, Mark, first of all, I'd like to thank you very much for your work on Klasky Chubo that defined all of our childhoods. I have three questions for you. Number one, was there anything that concerned Klasky Chupo and or Nickelodeon over episodes of his Told by Ginger, which you kind of answered already? Yeah, and I, I, I can just give you a little, uh, I did. And, but on top of that, at the, around that same time, maybe a little bit earlier, uh, a storyboard artist put... Um, wrote the word Nambla on the side of a bus on Rugrats. Oh, my God. <laughs> it seems very, very politically incorrect now, but, you know, they he thought it was very funny, and it got through production, and it got even on the air, and it was a big... These days, somebody would be arrested, but back then, you know, there was a lot of... You know, someone got in a very big trouble. But. Yeah, I mean, that's... I mean, you know, with... With Eric Malinsky talking about the albino family, how that was a mistake oh in God, Lunatic yeah. Lake... <laughs> That's perfectly fine with, yeah. <laughs> but Nambla, no, absolutely no. not. I mean, we even, I mean, Casey, Ashley, and I, we even thought in the episode Fast Reputation in which they wrote on the, um, on the, on the mirror uh, uh, that says, uh, no, on the, yeah, on the mirror that says Ginger Foutley is fast. It's like, yeah, I mean, if you know what the term fast is, I mean, it's like, wow, I can't believe they got away with this. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And that's you know, funny, it was 15 years ago, but the phrasing's all different, even in the, and, and she was gone, it says uh, there's a, a rap group at the end, you know, and it has a completely different meaning than it did then, you know, with music, so. Yes. Uh, his, uh, Plinkomatic's second question is, do you still keep in touch with any of the cast and crew members from the Klasky Chupo shows that you worked on? I do. I, uh, you know, I work with uh, Kate and Eric on the Mr. Men show. Paul was a voice on the Mr. Men show. Jackie was a voice. Uh, Jack, uh, Paul Greenberg, Jackie Harris were both cast members on the Mr. Men show. Kate bless, uh, blesses us with her writing on Space Racers, one of my current shows. Um, and, um, you know, I see, I haven't seen Eric in a while, but we, we communicate frequently or uh, occasionally. And, um, and a lot of the storyboard artists that I worked up with then, I work with now because they're great. All right, fantastic. And finally, number three, if someone had told you back in the early 2000s that I was told by Ginger would still have a fan following in the mid to late 2010s, would you have believed them? Yes, I would. I would, actually, because I think that I, think I mentioned this in the podcast that, that I think this show, I just felt like the show would remain in the hearts of the viewers and, you know, and the, the cast and the crew, and it does. All right. Uh, thank you very much for your questions, Plinkomatic. We go over to our next person. We have a question from Jason. And he asks, Hey, Mark, thank you so much for being a guest on the show. My question would have to do with the angles we see the show. There are numerous unconventional shots in the show, such as seeing Carl and Hoodsy from the lens of a security camera in one episode, to seeing the characters from the viewpoint of disgusting gum box from Cl Gym Class Confidential. How big of a part did you play in incorporating these perspectives that added to the originality of the show what was the relationship like between the storyboard artists and directors to make the show the look the way that it did thank you very much well it's a, it's a, it's a long question but it's a good, really good question uh, i work very closely with the storyboard artists on all my productions and um, very much involved in the visualization um, and i think i mentioned earlier in the podcast that we wanted ginger to look unlike any other series that had gone through the new pipeline of Plasky Chupo, and we wanted to find a solid way to stage the show that would make it stand out and you know something that you can tell the storyboard artists so that they can always hang their hat on it right hmm. 
And what we came up with, and this was in, in large part with I think Eric uh, Malinsky was involved in this, and Al Zegler was very, very much involved in this, is that we determined that it would be best that if we staged each shot, uh, it would be motivated by the emotions of the key character in that sequence. And so you'll see, like, there's some really great setups. And even in the, in the doghouse, you know, you'll see the Dutch angles and things um, because there's kooky stuff going on. Yes. Uh, but you'll notice in, in episodes like, uh, uh, I keep bringing um, uh, Alyssa and tie, tie ropes up, but that's a really great one for all the emotional stuff in that. It really, Tron Mai did that stuff, and he's a director over at, uh, feature director, I think, over at DreamWorks. Um, and it's just beautiful, beautiful work. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I can think of a lot of uh, different angles and perspectives. Like uh, Eric Molinsky even talked about when Joanne is eating the clams in Lunatic Lake, and <laughs> and even when um, you know we have the close-ups of the mouths, which you know is very prominent in Rugrats, in which you have the close-ups of the mouth, and you yeah. know just the different oh, yeah. angles. You know, d definitely a Klasky Chupo staple about different perspectives and angles. Yeah. Okay, we have the finest storyboarding I've ever been associated with. Yes, I do. was a cubo because we we held a very high standard, a film standard to the storyboards. Yes, I mean that meaning that they, they had to follow uh, film rules as far as uh, the the uh, picture plane and the screen direction and motivated cuts and all that stuff. Yes, absolutely. All right, uh, we have a question from uh, Z. Owen, and he asks, Hey, Mark, before I ask my question, I want to congratulate you for having such an amazing career. Anyways, my question for you, if As Told by Ginger were to return to television, what are some unanswered questions you would like to clear up and have answered for fans to hear? <laughs> well, thank you for the compliment. Uh, firstly, that's the unanswered questions. That's an interesting thing. Are there unanswered questions? Plenty. Yeah, of course. I mean, of course there are. But <clears throat> it depends on your perspective on this. And you can look at the finale for The Sopranos, or you can look at any of David Lynch's work. And the directors are leaving it to the audience's imagination, which mm -hmm. leaves it close to their heart. You know, if you have a, a definitive ending, and there's only one way to look at it, you're being spoon-fed, right? Yeah. And something like this is left open-ended, and it wasn't left open-ended intentionally, but, you know, I think it works that way. You know, and you can imagine, however, you know, did, what happened with Darren and Ginger, what happened with these other characters, you know? I, I kind of feel that there are some things in season three that are a little bit rushed and i felt like the, the, a lot of things could have been answered now i'm not talking about like the ending in which you know we actually see what the characters look like in their adult years i'm talking about like so uh here's one example that i can think of on the top of my head so uh, there's the episode called wicked game in which um we have miranda mipsy joining up with court um with uh Dodie and macy wanting to break up the relationship Great. between um darren and ginger and then um, it, it pretty much ends up with Courtney showing to Ginger and Darren that, the, uh, you know, Dodie and Macy are planning on breaking their relationship because they're just miserable. And then, of course, we have that dramatic scene in which when Courtney, um, you know, lets uh, Darren and Ginger on the phone alongside with the girls talking about like how they're going to break them up. And so Ginger and Darren are heartbroken and she pretty much never, she didn't tr trust Dodie and Macy ever again. And we don't even see that. And, you know, we've, the last thing that we see is that Dodie apologizes to Ginger and Ginger doesn't even pick up the phone. But then the next episode, which is called The Easter Ham, in which they're celebrating Easter and um, Joanne and Lois are fighting over the Easter Ham, Ginger, Dodie and Macy are acting like they're friends again. I, it, it makes you wonder what happened. How did they become yeah, friends again? In that case, in that case, you know, I think that we probably dropped the ball, and that there should have been a, you know, a, a, an episode between those two because I don't remember that ever coming up in any of the scripts. That's an excellent question for Emily, though. Oh man, I've I, I have gotten so many questions every time that we have a person <laughs> who's worked behind the scenes, whether it be Eric or any of the storyboard artists. I always get this question. And nobody knows the answer to it. Emily will know for sure. <laughs> uh, I knew you were going to say that. Uh, I know. Uh, but best of luck to us. I know. Uh, that's Emily's still our most requested guest, and we're trying. I'm sure she'll come around. She's she's busy. I'm sure. I, I, uh, yes, obviously she's really busy. But Wicked Game is yeah. one that everybody questions on what happened. <laughs> 
I'm glad people are looking at it so intently. <laughs> you have you have no idea. All right. <laughs> so um, anyway, Zion asked another question, and he says, um, "If if I can, if you can answer another question, that would be great because this one is about seeking advice." You see, I'm currently working on a series that's heavily inspired by As Told by Ginger and All Grown Up, a slice of life and coming of age genre animated series. I'm currently in the process of pitching my, I mean, creating my pitch bible, and will be reviewing it with my school psychologist who used to work in iCarly as a production assistant sometime in the future. What are some tips you can offer me to ensure that my series captivates people, and what should I do to move forward? Well, the thing we always say is, you know, that the work has to come from the heart. And this is, Emily's work is a great example of that. Not only is she structurally a great writer, but the work comes from the heart. And if it's by rote and it's by the numbers, everybody's going to know. We read scripts every day. You know, it's like exercising a muscle. We're reading scripts every day. So the people who are reading the scripts and, and seeing these pitch bibles, they really know what they're talking about, you know? Yes, absolutely. Um, this is a very complicated question, and what was the listener's name? Uh, Zeoan. So ask this listener, uh, I'd like you to give this listener my personal email and have them write to me directly, and I will, um, I'll, I'll talk to them offline and give them my, uh, you know, uh, more advice in person. Okay, or, well, absolutely. So Zeoan, you will be, uh, I'll be, me- uh, P- I'll be private messaging you Mark's um, email address, and you and Mark can have a conversation on, um, you know, some advice that you can do for your show. So yeah, um, stay tuned for that. All right, and we have one more question, and uh, this person uh, pretty much is going by guest. I guess they didn't come up with a username. So this person says, how would you go about crafting with your directing skills and as told by Ginger reboot to make <laughs> like the original but new? Gosh, I don't know. I mean, isn't there a reboot in the works right now? No, that that turned out to be a false um, oh, okay. lie. Okay. That, that's a lie. There you is know, no, there I, is no I, as told by Ginger reboot. You know, I, you know you can, I think I would put the focus on Carl and Fitzy and maybe Blake and uh, do a remake of Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? Ooh, that would be kind of interesting. <laughs> Seriously, though, I think, you know, it would be neat to do a live action version because the content really, there's, there's, it's, when shows are getting pitched, one of the questions that's frequently asked is why is this animation, right? Yeah. It should need to be animation. I mean, you know, there's a thing with the snake and some of the other, you know, some of the other stuff, the fantasy, the uh, and she was gone stuff, which was originally called and then she was gone, by the way. Uh, but uh, but there's no real reason for it to be animation. So if it were rebooted as a live action show, it would be really cool, and I would keep Ginger's um, diary and not turn it into a a blog or anything like that. <laughs> maybe, maybe the visualizations. <laughs> Maybe the visualizations of her, um, you know, her entries could be animated as a nod to the original series. That, that's actually a really good idea. Um, I know that Emily was interviewed um, a few years ago on, um, no, actually it was last year. Yeah, she was interviewed right. last year on Entertainment Weekly, and they were asking her a question about an As Told by Ginger reboot. And the thing that she said was, if anything, I would like to make it live action. So... Yeah, I mean, she oh, did. Oh, yeah. that's great, yeah. Yeah, because she so yeah because she did Suburgatory, which she calls as told by Ginger if it was live action. And she did <laughs> Selfie. Yeah. She did Selfie, yeah. and also uh, she's currently working on some other show. Uh, she's working on one on Fox, and I think she's one of the executive producers uh, of one of them on ABC. So, yeah, uh, she's definitely delving more into live action shows nowadays as opposed to animation. Yeah, she's a big time showrunner. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, final question, and this is one that I always ask to every guest that we've ever had on the show. So, um, what do you think of the legacy of As Told by Ginger as a whole? The legacy. I mean, you know, I don't think. I, can I just put it into one phrase? I mean, sure. Go fact, ahead. Do whatever you want. The, the fact that we're here 15 years later, talking about this, and that you've got busy. Uh, uh, people like Eric Casimero and Paul Greenberg and Jackie Harris and, you know, industry greats that are coming on your podcast to talk about a show that we made 15 years ago. I mean, that, and, the, and the fans are dissecting the episodes 15 years later. I mean, what more needs to be said about it? You're absolutely right. Uh, there's nothing really much to say other than that people still fondly remember it. That's right. 
As do I. All right. Uh, that should be it for this episode. So, yeah, thank you so much, uh, Mark, for coming in as a guest. Sure. Thanks for having me. That was fun. Uh, yeah. So, finally, uh, where can people find you at? You know, I don't do a lot of social media. I mean, not only am I, no, I'm a, not only am I an old guy, but... <laughs> But I just, uh, I just don't do social media. So uh, what they can do is um, they can watch two of my current shows. One is Space Racers, which is on uh, Sprout. Actually, the it's now the Universal Kids Network. And the other one is Yokai Watch, and that's on uh, Disney. And, uh, yeah, that's keeping me busy. All right, awesome. And you also have a website, markrisley.com. I do. So, yeah, uh, if you want to check out more of Mark's work, you can visit his website and learn more and also watch his shows. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So thank you so much for coming on by. And uh, we will definitely be um, having some more cool guests coming along over the next couple of months. Um, so, yeah, I'm not going to spoil anything. So stay tuned for that. That's it, everybody. Uh-huh. Um, thank you so much for listening to We're In Between. Hope to see you around soon. And thank you for listening. <laughs>